Okay, I'll simplify here and I have negative 25 over 6 plus 25 over 3. So yes, I I'll simp I'll simplified plus 27 over 2 minus 15. I'll simplify here and I have minus 25 over 6 and then plus 25 thirds. Okay, so this is negative 50 over 6. This is positive 50 over 3. Plus 27 halves and minus 15. And I have the LCD, which is 6. This one needs a 2. Uh, this one needs a 3. And I think it's 81. And this one needs a 6. Let me make sure that I'm correct with this. And then minus um, 80. I think so. Okay, so this is 50 and this is 1. So it's 51 over 6. And I can simplify it by 3. Um, and I get, uh, what do I get? Uh, 17. So let's see if I get um, 8.5. So, with a graphing calculator, we have a way of determining a definite integral. Not an indefinite that I know of, but a definite, yes. Math, go to 9. The lower limit was um, 0. The upper limit was 5 thirds. And then we had negative uh, 3x and plus 5. And then, of course, dx. And then plus another 9 from 5 thirds to 3. You know I don't trust anything without parentheses. It's just a habit. Sorry about that. I can't get it away from it. Um, 3t minus 5. And then, of course, dt. Well, we don't have that. So when I click Enter, I should get 8.5. I didn't. OK, so I'm checking now. 0 to 5 thirds, I entered this correctly. 5 thirds to 3. OK, so then. I'm assuming the calculator is correct, so I have to go back and check my numbers. So that was OK. And this is OK. I plug in 5 thirds. Negative 3 halves, 5 thirds squared, 25 over 9, and then 25 over 3. That's correct. Uh, with 0, it's gone. With 3, 27. If you find my mistake, please tell me right away. OK, so then 3 halves. And then this squared, 25 over 9. And then negative 15, uh, negative 25 over 3. Yes, that's correct. OK, let's see what I did. So I simplified the 3, so I got negative 25 over 6. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Here, what do I have? Again, negative 25 over 6. Yes. And then plus 25 thirds here. I had negative 50 over 6. I could have simplified it. Oh, never mind. Um, here I have positive 50 over 3. Here I have 27 over 5, over 2. And then minus 15. OK, what did I do? 6. This doesn't need anything. This needs 100, yes. This needs 3. Yes. And ah. Uh, Sorry. Sorry. OK, so then I have a 50 here. And here I have minus 9. So 50 minus 9 is 41. So 41 over 6. Is 41 divided by 6 what we got over there? Yes. OK, then. I'm glad I found my mistake sooner rather than later. 
So, uh, 6 times 15, please understand, it's not 80, but it's 90. Okay. That was the issue. Good. So that's uh, the net change theorem. Okay, uh, let's look at one more. Uh, the acceleration function, of course, given in meters per second squared, and the initial velocity are given for a particle moving along the, a line. Okay, fine. Find the velocity at time t, okay, and then find the total distance traveled during the given time interval. So let's choose one here. And then move on to the last section of this chapter and the course. Anyone? Okay, so I have a of t equals t plus 4. I'm given that v of 0 is 5, and the given interval is this. First, they're asking us, of course, to find the velocity. So the velocity is basically the indefinite integral from t plus 4 dt, which we know, no problem, t squared over, over 2 plus 4t plus a constant c. But we are given this condition. This initial condition will take care of c. Because they are telling us that 5 equals, when I plug in, 0. OK, so then c must be 5. So we found the velocity function in part a as t squared over 2 plus 4t plus 5. And this is done. Now, in order to determine the total distance, and this is not an easy situation, for finding the total distance, I will have to find the integral from 0 to 10, which is a definite integral, because it's a number. Now I want it. I don't want the function. I want to find a number. From, oops, from the absolute value of t squared over 2 plus 4t plus 5 dt. Which is not a friendly situation because I have the absolute value of a quadratic function. So we have to study that first. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to um, find the least common denominator here, which is t squared plus 8t and plus 10 dt. And if, we, if you remember from uh, epsilon delta definition, we know a property for the absolute value, an absolute value property that says, if I have the absolute value of a fraction, this can be written as the absolute value of the top over the absolute value of the denominator. Because I don't like, as you know already, too many distractions in there. So I will write the integral from 0 to 10 from the top in absolute value over the denominator in absolute value. So I have t squared plus 8t and plus 10. And now this becomes 2, and it will go in front. And it can wait patiently. So I simplified a little bit, so I don't have to worry about 1 half. Now, as we did before, but with a linear function, more friendly, but now we have to do it with a quadratic function. It will be like you said, Quinn said the, uh, before, t squared plus 8t plus 10 or the opposite of t squared plus 8t plus 10. When? When t squared plus 8t plus 10 is greater than or equal to 0. I'm going to write this again here, because it's not clear. And the other one, I'm not going to calculate anything, t squared plus 8t plus 10 less than 0. 
And now we have to discuss how we solve this. So number one, I had to use the net change theorem. Number two, I had to use the property of the absolute value. Then I had to simplify it a little bit. Now I'm getting into a different situation. I want to simplify this without the absolute value, but I have to solve the inequality because I don't know what's happening here. So let's solve this inequality. And once we solve this one, we automatically solve this one. So this is a quadratic inequality. Anyone has any idea of how to start this? Solving a quadratic inequality. We have several ways. I'll show you one or two. What do I have to do first here? Any suggestions? Y T. Yes, but how do I solve this inequality? What is my first step? So I have to find t such that this expression is greater than or equal to 0. So what will be my first step? Always. If it's not factorable, I have to try to factor it, but if it's not factorable, my first step would be to find the solutions. Set, set the, set the um, a quadratic expression equal to 0 or function equal to 0 and find t1 and t2 or just t and t, doesn't matter. So you don't have to show the quadratic formula anymore. I'm fine if you just simply go to apps and go to solving a polynomial. Go to 2, yes. And I have the coefficients 1 and um, 8 and then 10. And I got negative 1.55 and negative 6.45. So because these are not, uh, this is not factorable, what I would do in this case, I will simply graph the function. So I know it crosses at negative 6.45 and it crosses at uh, negative 1.55. I know it has a minimum. How do I know it has a minimum? Because the leading coefficient is positive. And I know it looks something like this. So for the interval between 0 and 10, the function is always positive. Look, it goes up here. It's never negative. So this is not in the interval 0, 10. So, so this inequality has solutions between this and this. So this is negative and outside positive. So how will I write? I'm going to copy this. So t squared plus 8t plus 10 in absolute value is t squared plus 8t plus 10 from negative infinity to negative 6 point, so uh, from a negative infinity to negative 6.45 with a bracket, union from negative 1.55 to infinity. And where is negative t squared plus 8t plus 10 between these two? 
on uh, negative 6.45 comma negative 1.55. Since we have the interval 0 to 10, we can drop the absolute value because 0 to 10 is here. This is not between 0 and 10. So then the total distance is 1 half the integral from 0 to 10 only from the positive, only from this. Um, ht plus 10 dt, which is 1 half t to the third over 3 plus 8t squared over 2 plus 10t from 0 to 10. Luckily, again, I always love to have one of the limits of integration 0 because if it's a polynomial, right? If it's a polynomial, it will be 0. So all I have to do is just plug in 10. So then the total distance, I'm on 10, is 1 half. Uh, I plug in 10, 1,000 divided by 3 plus. So this is 4. So this is 400. And this is plus 100. So 1 half, the least common denominator is 3. So I have 1,000. And this is plus 1,500 because it's 500 times 3. So I have... Um, so this is 2,500 divided by um, 6. And I'll simplify uh, 1,250 over 3. And I have to put the measurement unit. The total distance is, and it was given to us, yes. So it was given to us in meters. Good. So that's the total distance covered between 0 and 10. You understand why I needed to investigate this? Because it could have ended up being somewhere between 0 and 10, and then I would have had to use two integrals. But it turns out that both solutions are negative. So if both solutions are negative, negative 6.45 and negative 1.55, they're not relevant anymore because 0, 10 is here. 0, 10 is not here. It's only here. So I'm only using the top of branch. So now um, let's uh, take a look at what I would like to do is, uh, before we come back and look at indefinite integrals, because we have a ton here of indefinite and we looked at definite, so we can choose any any indefinite to practice. We did that, but it doesn't matter. See if you want to choose one. And then let's continue with the last section of chapter five. So let me know if you want to choose any of the indefinite integrals. Can we do 22? 22, very good, excellent. So let's take a look at 22. The integral from secant t, secant t plus tangent t dt. Good pick. So my first thought is, well, I see a function that is a product of this function and this function. So what if I do this first? Secant squared plus secant t tangent t. I distribute it because now it makes sense. Which function prime is secant squared? Anyone? Which function we differentiate to get secant squared? Tangent, right? Ten. Good. Perfect. Plus, which function prime, when we differentiate it, we get secant tangent?
it's secant, right? Tangent prime is secant squared, secant prime is secant tangent.